Oh, what on earth are you doing? What are you doing? Hi guys, and welcome back to Liverpool. If you've been enjoying the series, drop a like, helps out, all that jazz, algorithm ultras, and so on. So, I accidentally went a bit further than I was expecting to here. I was actually supposed to come back Friday night, but then the auto continued, took over, and I couldn't seem to stop it. So, um... Yeah, there's been some fixtures. Uh, as you can see, Spurs actually did grab another victory. They've won a couple now, and I've started to pull themselves away from the relegation zone. Chelsea lost at home to Wolves, who continue their insane start of the season, who still have 26 points on the board. They're having a great start of the year. It's still feel they'll feel the way eventually, but it's nuts how well they've done. City through an Ilkay Gundogan penalty uh, have gone back ahead of us again. They're looking very good. United, uh, now that they've sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, um, they, were in, they started the season so well and were kind of neck and neck with us. And then they just fell away completely. But as you can see, another hat-trick for Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, he is very, very good in FM this year, it would seem. Uh, contrary to real life, it would seem as well. I think that's 14 he's got in the league already. Yeah, 14 goals uh, Cristiano Ronaldo have managed to bag for United so far in 12 matches. Might not have even played 12 matches thus far. It's actually kind of mental how good he's been for them too. So that's the situation here as we play West Ham. Not going to be an easy game, but we know that a win will send us back to the top of the league again. Trivia! Today in our middle game, we play against Inter Milan in, of course, the Champions League in a must-win match. And I have a piece of trivia for you today. Who is the all-time appearance record holder for Inter Milan? That is, all competitions all appearances. Who is it? And maybe if you feel an extra fancy, how many did he get? We've had an international break. Uh, sadly, though, Bobby Firmino picked up a knock on said international break, which is disappointing and frustrating. What's going on with Mane here? Arrest. Ah, it's, ah, it's so difficult to not to do here because obviously at some point we are going to have to rest people. It's just an inevitability, but it's difficult to know when to do it. What I'd say is Inter or West Ham. Overall, probably the Inter game is a more important game out of the two. And I feel like it's one we'd need the best possible team out there to have a chance at winning. So I feel like if we're going to drop Mane for one of those two games, it's probably best if it's today's game here. The question then becomes who we put in in place of him. That's where things start to get a little bit funky. I'm thinking Jota, but it really is tough for us. And I know it seems strange, but I really liked Milner at left back last time. It just seemed to work for us for whatever reason. And particularly as I very much enjoyed Naby Keita. Oh, he's knackered. What I was thinking is putting Naby Keita back in uh, there again because he played so well. But it might be that we kind of just have to maybe rotate him in for the Inter game potentially. But if we can just keep getting through matches without this being a problem, then I'll be pretty happy with that. It sucks that we don't have Fabi uh, Firmino, but at least Origi, as we've seen, can do a job here. Now, West Ham play a very similar looking shape to what Wolves do. Weird though, because this is not the system that my scouts record they were going to play. They had them playing a standard 4-2-3-1. It's this shape that worries me the most. Uh, we've looked at some of our worst when we've played against that particular shape. And honestly, I know why I switched that over to have an attacking midfielder against Wolves. And it got us a goal, but it did sod all after that. And I wonder if maybe I'd have been better off keeping things as it was. As with all of these things, if you're going to win things, you've got to work out how to play against all different types. So maybe today is the day that if things are again going wrong, we get a chance to try something out and try to find a way through a system like this. The real issue for us basically seemed to be against Wolves, that because they had such a huge amount of width with both wingbacks and wingers, our wide players were being completely marked out of the game for the most part. And it does kind of make you wonder if there's a way of maybe packing the midfield even more that would potentially allow us to cut through them by focusing through the center. It would make it more difficult in the wide areas, but it's maybe something I would try should things once again require us to make some tactical switches in today's game. But we, we will see. Uh, we'll give it to the first half and see how things are going. And, you know, we never know. We might be winning. Who knows? So nice ball through for four nows. And they've got that overlap again as well, forcing us all back. Relatively easy for Allison, but again, straight off the bat, they've already had a shot. This might have to be one of those sort of scrappy games that we just have to try to get a set piece or try to win a penalty or something just to try and sneak our way through potentially. Nice ball. Salah makes the running behind. He's gone for the goal. Wow. If we can just find that one little bit of play to open them up, then we might get our chance. And that might be all it takes. Jota. Bit of space for Origi now. He's dropped very deep. Could cut inside and shoot perhaps. No, goes back for Fabinho again. Got to keep moving it. Oh, dangerous. Henderson, now a space, and Mo Salah has missed the target. Fabinho, around the side for James Milner, bit of space opens up for him, and it's well saved by Adri uh, not Adrian, by Ariola. Okay, the half is wearing on, and we're starting to get better and better now. It's a half time, and you can see again, defensively, we've actually been very, very good at limiting West Ham here, but they've been quite compact, and the best chances we've had is when that ball has been 
slipped into that channel through the middle, but we just struggled to get those opportunities. It's almost like he's not as good as Salah, but other things too. Although he has broken in behind here. Jota! Oh, I mean, that that right now has to be a goal. He has got to finish that. Uh, brilliant piece of play. Lovely run as well. The run was great. The cross was found beautifully to him, but there it's just, you have to score. Van Dijk's header is well saved as well by Ariola. We've still got bodies forward. We're keeping West Ham nicely penned in. Salah again, and that time it's offside this time against Jota. Okay, he has actually started the second half brightly in terms of his positioning, but this might still be given. Fractionally offside, it says. Usually when it says fractionally offside, that those are the ones that are disallowed, I think. Uh, no? Is it given? I think it's been given. Sorry, it's I'm still learning the new things. Yeah, I mean, no, he's onside. Jota with the goal, and we do have the lead at Anfield, and it is Diogo Jota, the man I was complaining about. But to be fair to him in this second half, he has actually found some really nice runs. I was very close to bringing him off at half time, but he's had two really good chances in the second half. That one was put on a plate for him. It was almost impossible to miss that one. <laughs> then again, you say that about a few times, I would say, but it is 1-0, and the performance has actually been excellent. Now the spaces are starting to pop up. Jota getting through again nearly, particularly as it would send us to three straight Premier League victories. Back to the top of the league with Norwich City next. And again, look at the space with our centre-backs pushing into the midfield. That's really what seems to have made the difference today. The willingness of our centre-backs to push into midfield and create an extra body there as Salah's over the top, brings it down. That's a big save again from Nipples. Yeah, look, look, every single time Virgil van Dijk gets the ball, he's able to make a run into midfield, which releases other players and Salah's in behind again here. Oh, and he's been fouled. That looks like it's going to be a penalty. Penalty awarded. I don't know what Aaron Cresswell is doing there, but Mo Salah has a massive chance now to put this game to bed for us. And he's missed it, but on the rebound, has chosen not to shoot. Oh my god, that's the first time I think I've seen a penalty missed in open play uh, on FM22, honestly. I know Joe Gomez missed that one in the shootout. That would have been perfect, because that would have been 2-0. I could make a couple of subs to prepare. Salah. Oh, he's got Trent. He's got Henderson, and it's saved again without needing him at all. That would be excellent. I have now brought off... Oh, that's a shocker from Lanzini, and he is off. Manuel Lanzini takes an early bath there. That, the referee's just immediately just binned him off straight away. There wasn't even any pageantry. He's just immediately gone. So it is now Liverpool 1, West Ham 0, and Liverpool... Well, sorry, and West Ham now down to 10 men. Our domination today has been phenomenal, but the, the scoreline is a little bit uh, underwhelming. But then I suppose we did get five against Watford in a game that perhaps we didn't deserve five from. But maybe we can crack on now for the final 15, grab a second goal and kill this off. Gomez's ball, Oxley chamberlains header, and it's saved again by Areola. Nice to see Jota get a goal. It didn't, hasn't done much else today, though, as his rating has continually fallen after that as Henderson clears it away. We've got 10 seconds to kill. Hopefully we can just see this final five seconds of the match out now. Uh, get Ben Rama to just shepherd this off the pitch, and he might even run it out of play himself. It doesn't matter. Liverpool won, West Ham nil. We've got through a bit of a tough test there, um, although in the game itself, it actually didn't turn out to be that way, and we probably could have had a lot more goals, but... Hey, maybe we're saving them for Inter. Most important thing in the end, though, is that we got through it, nobody got injured, and we got a chance to rest Mane. Happy with that. Even happier by the fact that that pushes us once again back to the top of the Premier League. 28 points on the board, level with City, still only two clear of Wolves, but six clear of Arsenal now, and more importantly, eight, no, nine clear of West Ham with a game in hand on them as well. Well, the good Lord giveth, but the good Lord taketh away at the same time. Ah, uh, he just wear and tear. I mean, that is just a case if he's played too much. Um, but this is why I wanted to try and sign a right back <laughs> in that January transfer, not the January, we could honestly i wouldn't be opposed to looking in january for a right back too just to give us some backup to trent i think that means he's probably going to miss the inter game now or at the very least be knackered for it rafa benitez is gone everton have sacked him and to be fair they're in the relegation zone okay so <laughs> at home to inter um our form couldn't be any better right now i think that's four in a row in all competitions now we've won which is nice to see because i was really starting to worry about all those draws but it does seem to have come good for us if we can turn that into five in a row today that would be superb and we kind of need to but I am a bit worried about our team selection situation here right now. Oh, it's not good. But at least, at the very least, Mane can come back in. But Salah, oh, dearie me. I kind of want to get Salah through this game and then rest him for the Norwich game at the weekend. Because I feel like we could get through Norwich without Salah. It is looking very, very tough otherwise. I think Henderson's going to have to start there, though. Henderson and Cater together. I am not fussed by that at all. Uh, Milner to left back. And I assume that's because Joe Gomez is too knackered. Oh, no, because he's having to play centre back because of Van Dijk. Ah. Ooh, I'm tempted to bring Gomez to the right wing back spot and bring Canate in because there's a reason he's at this club. I know that there's that, but he's actually a solid centre back, to be fair. And I feel like he needs an opportunity. And I think we might just have to do this here because I'd rather have Fabinho in that role with Gomez there to get our midfield looking pretty swish. Salah at right wing. I mean, we're going to have to, aren't we? It's If we found ourselves in a position to take him off, I would absolutely do it, but I don't think that's the case. I think Norwich City next is definitely going to be a restable game for people. This is a weird one because it's similar-ish to the 
systems that we've faced against before and actually not done too badly. And it does feel like it's a slightly different setup from Inter. I can't remember how they set up last time. I, I hope if, as long as Trent, who isn't on the pitch, can't do anything stupid this time if you're not playing. Because that first Inter game was, I think, one of two games this season where I felt that we played poorly. Uh, that and the United game. Now, admittedly, we actually managed to dig ourselves out of the game against Manchester United, but this would be interesting. We could, can we really? I guess if we win and then Dinamo Kiev do us a favour, we could. I don't see us qualifying today. I think that's very unlikely. But if we've got any chance at winning this group, we must win this match. In fact, that would give us a very strong chance at winning this group, provided we could beat Porto at home on the final day, because then it'd be in our hands, essentially. Inter will almost certainly go and beat Dinamo Kiev in that final match, but it won't matter if we can get ourselves back in front of them here. And that really is the key. We've certainly turned it around after a poor start um we did not start well in this group but we actually have the best goal difference now not that that really matters that much only where that could matter is if it came to like some three-way head-to-head tie uh between all of us and that potentially it would have to go to goal difference after that between the three of us and just having a, it's nice to have a solid goal difference anyway you know there's nothing wrong with having a good goal difference and that four nil victory is good for confidence but i mean you saw how good inter were in the latter stages the last game was chalanolu who came off the bench i think in the last game ben's won just wide early days Clipped long, should easily be mopped. Oh, what on earth are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I, I don't, I, I kind of feel like I actually have to step outside for a minute to actually just understand what's just happened there. Hang on a minute. Oh, okay. Let's watch that again. I have many questions, friends. Many, many, many questions indeed uh, in the inquiry as to what the hell just happened there. So first thing of these questions is two centre-backs running away from the ball without even looking at it when it's being lumped directly towards them. Uh, maybe turn around and try and win the header. First thing. Second thing. Goalkeeper comes out, then decides that he too is going to turn around and run away from the ball. <laughs> and then at no point... <laughs> At no point does he think, I'm going to probably turn around. <laughs> he turns the wrong way. <laughs> you have to laugh. You have to laugh. That is absolutely ridiculous, man. Hopefully, we can dig ourselves out of the hole that uh, we've just built ourselves there. The, the combination of the three centre-backs and uh, the goalkeeper choosing to... It turns out there were actually three Chuckle Brothers. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, but you are now. Hopefully we can come back into this one now. Salah, lovely ball through for Mane. It's a tight angle and he's got the shot away and Handanovic makes a big stop. But actually, it's been a solid start from us in this game, really. If you just exclude that absolute monstrosity of whatever it was. Milner to take the corner now. Ball to the back post and it's cleared away. I'm glad Mane is looking fresh today. Uh, having a full, nice rest has certainly helped him out. Milner clips it back to him. James Milner with the strike. God, I hope we can pull this back now. Henderson into the box again. He's going through a few challenges. Finds Keita, slots it. Not quite home, but again, we are peppering into it at the moment. And Mane's done very well to find Origi. Oh, the ball in for Salah. Here it comes. It's a bit too deep for him. It's a poor pass Marigi Origi. Back across for Origi, and it's in the back of the net. Never mind. Liverpool won. Inter Milan nil. One? One. In my head, it's still nil because of what just happened. But Origi scores in the Champions League. Wow. His original pass was actually pretty diabolical. Great work from Mane, though. I mean, he's there's a lot better pass on here for, for Salah, but... Salah makes something brilliant out of this. Great first touch, lovely swivel, and, I mean, the goalkeeper can't see. Origi slots it home. Liverpool won. Milan, not Milan, Inter won, and we deserve that. That is a very deserved equaliser from the boys. The first half performance has actually been really good from an attacking perspective. Just that one random blip, and now Dzeko's in behind, but that should be easy for Alisson, although you just don't know with him at the moment. I've literally seen 60s cartoons with less clangers in them. Oh, Origi with a flick on him. Mane's into the box. He might get the shot away here, or at least square it, and it's a chance, and it's Salah at the back post, and it's Liverpool 2 into 1, and we we have turned this one around in the space of about 10 minutes. Come on! This is the exact performance we need. A great ball from Allison. Lovely flick on into the channel from Origi. And then, once Mane goes to the byline here, it takes all the interplayers out the play. They get caught out, and Salah's there to roll it home for 2-1 Liverpool. This is huge. Henderson, oh, if there's a third here. Gomez into the box now. Loads of space, and Origi's shot is well saved. As Porto take the lead against Dinamo Kiev, we expected that. It really does keep them in the hunt still. Going into that final day, we would not be secured of anything as Mane gets it now, and Salah... Oh, and it's still blocked. We should have had a third here. But the pressure continues as Milner brings it forward now. Scythe down a little bit there. And it's Liverpool 2 into 1 at half time. But what a first half from us. I mean, basically, all of Inter's XG, mostly, has come from the howler at the start of the match. And we've been fantastic since then. Third goal, though, would be very, very welcome indeed. And I think we've created enough in this game to make me suggest that we can get it. There's some lovely bits of play being made. As Mane's throw, he's not going to be able to shoot from the Oh, he actually has. 
we look like we can tear through Inter at virtually whenever we want at the moment, which is good news, but we need to get that third goal. As, I mean, that's not a foul, is it? There's just no chance that's a foul. Okay. Ironically, that kind of balances it out a little bit, doesn't it? Because I think that Trent was very unlucky to get sent off in the first game for a two-footed lunge, and then there's no way in a million years that that was a two-footed lunge either. It is all just about patience for me now. Oh my God, he's giving it straight to him. And Origi oh, on the pass. Jordan. Oh, he has to pass that better. I can't believe we've missed that opportunity. Oh, what I would give. What on earth? They brought on, they brought on no one. They've brought on no one. Oh, very dear. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Inter are down to nine men. So it's now currently Liverpool 2, Inter Milan 1, but Inter are now playing with nine men. Um, <laughs> this has been one of the most bizarre matches I've seen on FM22, to be honest. First the goal that they scored, and then everything after that. Uh, the red card, us turning it around so effervescently, and now playing against nine men for the final 20 minutes of this one. We could potentially bin Inter off here. A third goal would be great, though, because it would give us the advantage on head-to-head, -head, which would be really, really key. Milner. Oxide chamberlain now. So a third goal, very quite quite important, if you ask me. As Henderson's shot is well saved, rather than moving to something untested. Oh, crying out loud, Allison! I don't know what he's been smoking before the kickoff today, but it ain't good. Oxide chamberlain can he slip it through for someone? He does! He's found Harvey Elliott! That looks onside. I'm fairly certain that Harvey Elliott was onside there. It's Liverpool 3 into 1. I don't think there's much question about that one. He looked very onside to me, and I'm fairly certain this is going to be given. And Harvey Elliott might well just have given us the goal that could potentially... There... What? The one time I thought that he wasn't offside... That, did, that line did not look like where his body was, <laughs> is all I'm saying. It looked like the line was drawn completely independent of that. As Elliott's now through a second time... Oh, and he's missed the target this time. Back through for Mane. Can he square it? Yes, he can. And it's Diogo Jota and it's Liverpool 3 into 1. And we really did need that third goal just to ensure that we get a better head-to-head -head than Inter. And that's so important because it means going into that final group stage game against Porto, we would only need a draw to win the group at that point because there's no danger of Inter doing anything because we'd, be, we'd, be, we'd have a better head-to-head. -head. Lovely ball in. It's actually blocked brilliantly, but Jota slides it over the line and it's Liverpool 3 into 1. Come on. What a game. Liverpool 3 into 1. Although Canate has had a chance to make it 4 in the final stages, but it is going to be a 3-1 victory, and that is extremely good for us. I mean, we deserved the win on the night. You could see the Inter flatlined after their goal. We dominated the entire 90 minutes, really, uh, except for that very first few moments. But what a game. What a bloody game from the ridiculous goal to us turning it around in a 10 minute spell into then going down to nine men Harvey Elliott's goal disallowed and then Jota scraping one over the line to give us a crucial win Whew. <laughs> what a bloody game I don't know if you'd even want this information now but yeah for those of you doing the trivia along with me um yeah Inter's most appearances holder is Javier Zanetti with 858 in all competitions that's a nutty amount of appearances over 20 years at the club what they could have done with him on the pitch today is all I could say for that one particularly on the defensive side of things that does make huge differences for us though what a turnaround in this group as well buying seven nil winners but now we only need a draw on the final day because a draw against Porto means we'll finish above them. Inter, if they get a victory, which they probably will, it won't matter, though, because our head-to-head -head is better than them. Superb. And I think that the whole, like, red card thing kind of balanced out from both games. So I'll take that because we got a dodgy one in the first game. I literally just tried to praise Joel Matip for his recent form. And he disagreed with me. And I said, well, that's good. I'm glad that we have different standards about this and you want to do better. And he said, I'm not satisfied and I don't think I can let this go away quietly. I think we're done here. Sorry? Are you brain dead? What is that? Hopefully, though, we can inflict some pain on them today. As you'll notice, uh, just above my head right now, that this is not looking spectacularly good for them currently. I don't know, but we are going to have to make changes here. So this is basically going to be a no Salah, no Mane day. Uh, assistant, what are we thinking here? I think it might have to honestly be Curtis Jones on the left and Harvey Elliott on the right, with them both on the bench to bring bring in if we need to. The, um, and we did that against Inter without Alexander-Arnold too, which is extremely impressive from the guys. Thiago there. I think it Fabinho's knackered too. Oh, he's playing centre-back. Okay. Um, No, that's not happening. Uh, definitely bring in Matip. I know he hates me at the moment because I told him he was doing well, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers and all that. I might even put Cater in there alongside Oxlade-Chamberlain because that is a dynamic as hell midfield. I feel like the lineup we've got out here right now should be strong enough to get through this game, but you just don't know. And also, with Origi, I think I need to start Origi instead of Jota. 
Let's finish this off with a bang, shall we? Let's try and do six out of six today, as far as the recording session goes. Best case scenario, though, is we're able to win this game, even if it is a scrappy one. Oh, that could be a red card for Billy Gilmore. It is. Gilmore's gone after 20 minutes, and now we get another game against 10 men. This is great. Relieves a lot of the defensive pressure on these guys, and now it's just about getting one goal, I think. I think if we score a goal in this game, we win. And that's all we're going to really need to do. And I really just don't want to have to bring on Salah and Mane for any moments in this match, to be fair. Keita, maybe just cut inside Ben on himself. And he does, and it's a good save from Gunn. It also helps us that they've got Pookie through the middle, who is, you know, more of a deep-lying forward type of player and is unlikely to make the lung-busting runs in behind. Although, ooh. I'm also going to start distributing to the flanks too. Raul, here we come. Origi, great goal. There we go. 1-0 right before halftime. Divock Origi, lovely ball from Oxlade Chamberlain. Exactly what we needed to break the deadlock right before halftime so we can kind of chill a little bit in the second half, knowing that it's very unlikely Norwich are going to be able to muster a great deal. We've just got so much width and so much space, even in the center of the park here with our midfield three. They don't track the Origi run, and it's just a lovely little slotted finish. Great stuff. Well, halftime, definitely the better of the sides. Uh, they've not done a lot obviously. Um, but we've not been spectacular either, really. With 15 or so minutes to go, it's looking good for us at the moment. Again, Norwich have yet to have a, a shot. Oh, and well, Aaron's has absolutely done Gomez there, and this is concerning. He's got to get back and make a block here. The last thing we need is Norwich grabbing a, a melee of a goal here, and it's a load of space from McLean. Whew, that might be their chance. Gomez round the side for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Great first touch, and he can't finish it. Oh, God. <laughs> Jota came on and has now gone off. And now we're down to 10 men as well. Okay, good. It's a corner, but it, this is... Oh, no, 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 no. This is worrying. Because if they were to find the right cross here, it could be a problem. Oof. They basically did. And I think that might well be enough for us to hang on. Uh, didn't exactly make the most of the 10 men. I, I think maybe I shouldn't have changed the system around a little bit, trying to maximise it, particularly when we were already in front, because uh, it wasn't exactly the best of second half performances. Norwich didn't even have a shot on target, in fairness, but that injury to Jota, I'm worried that could be serious. Far from our best, but it does keep us plugging away at the top. And now 10 points clear of Chelsea in fifth, which is really, really good news. Um, everyone else kind of picked out the results as well. Tight calf. Oh my God. I thought that was going to be a serious one. All of a sudden, things start to look a lot, lot better now. Great result against Brighton. Played well. Dino Kiev had to grind it out, but we got the result. Watford was fantastic. Ironically, played better against West Ham, but still only managed to get the 1-0 win, but that's fine. Phenomenal against Inter. And then just sort of had to scrape it over the line against Norwich, but that's fine. Next episode, though, is sort of the, the decider of all these things. We still have Leeds to play at home there. Spurs away. It's not an easy game. You just don't know. And then Porto at home in well. We only need a draw at Anfield to win our Champions League group now. And what a turnaround of fortunes that's been from when we started. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, this has been an absolute classic for me. Drop a like. That'd be gorgeous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be lovely too. I'll see you on my stream on Twitch too. Go follow there as well. I'll see you soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.